the last addition to my house, the costume room. No home is complete without a place to store the things you carry throughout life. The costume room is especially coveted by pirates because we can't use banks. Training construction without a bank means I need to make the most of my inventory space. Unfortunately, this means I'm gonna have to get rid of some of the items I spent a lot of time getting, like the adamant axe. So I may as well just do a little bit more training with it just to make sure that I am prepared until I can get another one. Okay, I think I'll stop at 60 wood cutting. Just gotta turn these into some headless arrows real quick. All right, that should be the last of them. And there's 59 fletching. A pretty insignificant level, but a level all the same. Whoa, how did I not notice there was a clue in this nest before? After planting my saplings, I set out to find where the treasure map led. Luckily, it didn't take long to find the location of the casket. My skin crawled with anticipation as I opened it. I could not believe my eyes. A monk's robe, trimmed in royal silver. This was not a coincidence, but a declaration from the heavens. This is great because I would much rather have the prayer bonus over the wizard robe, and to store the wizard robe in my house, I need to have the full set. But for the monk's robe, I don't need the full set. I can just store the top by itself, making it so much more convenient to have, so I think I'm just gonna keep the monk's robe instead. This could not be a bigger sign for me to train construction right now. But before we do construction the conventional way, there's something I almost forgot about. There are a total of 29 easy stash units, in addition to the three beginner stash units that you can build with just regular planks. The other ones require higher tier planks and a higher construction level, so we don't have to worry about those just yet, but at the very least, we should get these ones done. With that complete, it was finally time to begin what I call the Great Wooden Chair Grind. Everything was going well until I looked at my pile of gold pieces. Now, the costume room costs 50k GP to build. This is on top of all the charter ship fees I'll need to pay while running planks to my house. So it looks like I'm gonna need to rebuild my cash stack real quick. And what better place to do this than the Corsair Cove dungeon? Hours later, I left the Corsair Cove dungeon with 170k and a few stacks of runes. As usual, I took these runes to the Tazar area to see if I could get something unique. Nope, maybe next time. Time for more construction. That was my last nail. Well, that's enough work for today. Guess I'll need to make another trip to Piscarilius. Heading to Zaya? Oh yes, it's been a long day. What? Uh, excuse me? Yes? Save who? I don't know what you're talking about. Are you okay? Yeah, I thought you just... Uh, never mind. It's been a long day. Understandable. Come, let's head out. Otherwise, we won't reach Zaya till nightfall. Ah, of course. The shop is closed. Damn storm.
Nasty weather out, ain't it? It's good for business. What can I get you? I'll take a pint of whatever you got on tap. We got Blood Porter, Drake's Fire, Three at a Dog, Lower King Stout, Shauna Silver. Uh, surprise me. Silver it is. That'll be 50 gold pieces. I would be careful if I were you. That's Khaled. He runs this town. Uh, do I know you? Uh, do I know you? Doubt it. But I've heard of you. You're Ingus. Yes. How did you know that? I've done my digging. That's my job after all. I'm sorry. Who are you? I'm John. John the Historian. I travel all over Gileanor, collecting stories from heroes and investigating the forgotten secrets of these lands. I see. What brought you to Port Piscarilius? I can tell you, but not here. These are dark times, friend. Come with me. Goodbye, John. I'm sure we'll run into each other again. Aye, come find me if you hear anything about... You know what? There we go. That should be all the nails that I need. Let's head back to construction. Okay, I got about 40k experience to get, and I'm topping out at about 6k per hour. <laughs> So it's gonna take a while. I knew there was something special about 44 construction. I can build the tool store for now. Would have been a lot useful earlier. I don't need to go to Remington if I need to make any jewelry, which will save me so much time. Okay, last wooden chair for 45 construction. That wasn't that bad. And here we are building yet another wooden chair. But I just realized something. I can build this bookcase, which is um, pretty cool. As I continued to build chair after chair, a memory edged its way from the corners of my mind. It was a story told by Garant, the fishing shop owner, all those years ago. I think it went something like this. <clears throat> Once upon a time in Remington, there was an elderly carpenter who was ready to retire. So he traveled north to Falador, where his employer's office was located. He informed the estate agent of his plans and told him that he was ready to live a more leisurely life with his wife and enjoy his extended family. He would miss the lump of GP he was paid each week, but over the years of working, he had saved enough so he was able to get by for the rest of his life. The estate agent was sorry to see his good worker go, and asked if he could build just one more house as a personal favor. The carpenter said yes, and set out to build his final house. The estate agent visited the carpenter to check on the progress of the house from time to time, and with each new week, it became obvious that the carpenter's heart had left his work. He resorted to shoddy workmanship and used inferior materials, a sad way to end such a successful career. When the carpenter finished his work, the estate agent came down to Remington one last time to inspect the house. Then he reached out his hand and gestured for the carpenter to take the key and said, this is your house, my gift to you. The carpenter looked around in shock. If he had only known that he was building his own house, he would have done all of it so differently. Garant explained, We build our lives one day at a time, often with minimal effort. Then, when we finally reach the point of retirement, we realize that we must live in the house we have built for ourselves. And unfortunately, we cannot go back. You are the carpenter, Ingus. And with each coming day, you hammer a nail, place a board, and erect a wall. So build your house wisely. I never really took those words seriously, but as I stand here constructing these chairs and building my house, I'm starting to realize that I'm the master of my own destiny. And with my mother gone, I am alone in this world. While this thought circled around in my mind as I continued to work, I nearly missed the final construction level that I needed. It's over. It's finally over. We are done building chairs. We got 49 construction. It is now time to furnish our new home. So let's do that. 
First up is a fancy range to cook our food. Go big or go home. That's what I say. I totally forgot about this apple tree. There is 38 farming. Next up, I'm gonna need 15 bars total for the sink, which we are able to do, just had to drop some stuff. But the problem is I don't have a saw or a hammer. So what I'm gonna need to do is drop these runes and then pick them up after I build the sink. There we go, sink is built. There's our runes and we now have our very own kitchen. The only thing I need to do now is figure out how and where to catch eclectic implings. And we will finally be on our way. I have the level now, but where am I gonna find those implings? Huh? I know what it is you seek. Whoa, jeez. Why'd you sneak up on me like that? Shh. Keep your voice low. Sorry. Why are you here? I can show you where to catch implings. I believe you need them to progress. Yes. But how can I trust you? You met a man named John Episcarilius, yes? How did you know that? Because we are on the safe side. Come with me. Hi there. For those who made it this far in the video, I just wanted to say thank you. It just really means a lot to me. I know some people don't really like the cutscenes or whatever that I do, and that's okay, I understand that. So I'm really thankful to all the people who stick around and watch the full video, because there's a lot of work that, <laughs> that goes into this, and uh, I don't know what else to say, I just really appreciate all of you a lot. The reason some of the videos take so long is usually because of the scenes that I write, because I have to write a script, and then I have to figure out, well, how do I want to portray that script visually? And then I have to find people to voice act for the parts. But those are just some very like small logistic issues and they don't really prevent me. They just take, they take a little bit more time than just the normal gameplay stuff. But the biggest thing that slows me down, I think, is Every video, I have realized that I try to reinvent the wheel, which I think is an overall positive thing because it forces me to make better and better videos. But in doing that, I am also constantly putting a lot of pressure on myself all the time for each and every video. So when I'm making a video and I start adding all these scenes, it then the project just grows exponentially. And then I end up in a position where it, it's so much work that I haven't planned out. And then I'm trying to like organize it all and like figure out where it goes. And then it's just, it's just crazy. Really had the same structure for any of my videos. So initially for this episode, I was going to include three or four more full cinematic scenes, probably equaling to another like five minutes, just for the story. But I ended up cutting out a lot of that. And the gameplay, it's, and the gameplay too, I was going to include a lot more for this ep. But if that's the case, then my videos are gonna be really long, and I'm not sure if you guys really want that. And second of all, it's gonna take a long time in between videos. It's basically like I'm making a full-length movie, just improvising all of it, without without planning any of it really, except for like what I'm gonna do in game. So yeah, it's kind of a lot. So I decided to cut this episode shorter just so I could get something out there, cause I figured it's better just to get something out there for you guys to watch so you know that I'm not dead. <laughs> and continue forward. I have a lot of gameplay already recorded, it's just a matter of editing them, really. And really the thing that takes the longest is the story. The storytelling is what I really want to do because it taps into something that I haven't ever seen in other RuneScape videos. 
and and the most special thing ab about RuneScape or any other MMOs is that they bring you into this completely new world, this magical world. Since I was a kid, I've always been a fan of fiction, and it's ultimately why I've gone this route with my videos, because I believe stories are the things that unite us, and just from observing and interacting with people in the game, I've just realized that there's just so much negativity in the game, and in part because it's frustrations from the real world, I've always played RuneScape to kind of get away and experience this different world because there are things in the game that you can't really do in the real world. It's it, The community as a whole could really benefit from more stories. That's it. That's all that... <laughs> I guess that's all I'm trying to say, really. I don't know. Maybe you guys disagree with this, but that's what I'm trying to get at and that's what I'm trying to tap into with my videos. So. I'm sorry that, <laughs> that it's been like over a month, was meant to be way longer, but I just decided to cut it short and keep the videos relatively short for the rest of this season. Maybe things will change for season three. I have some ideas for how I want to do that. So I've been stuck in a rut for quite a long time, but things are starting to get better for me. So I just wanted to talk about this and let you all know what's up. So thanks for keeping up with the series and just giving me this opportunity because I don't know what I would do without you guys. So, thank you.